All right, we're all set, Gunnar. Right on. And am I properly unmuted, mate? Yes, loud and clear. Excellent. Welcome, everyone, to the Mozilla Webmaker Weekly Community Call. It's great to have you all here. Uh, let me direct your attention to line 71 in the Etherpad. And this week's Etherpad is etherpad.mozilla.org slash capital M, May 08. Line 71, we've got uh, just a, uh, excuse me, line 81, we've got blog posts, press, and weekly updates that you can click off to and become distracted with. And on to line 91, we are very lucky today to have Christopher Allen joining us to talk about his Hot Hacks demo. And so without further ado, Christopher, let me invite you to introduce yourself and tell us what might be up with your Hot Hack demo. Hello, can you all hear me? We can. Great. Um, well, thanks a lot for inviting me to be on this call. Um, yeah, we, we had an excellent opportunity two weekends ago to get together with a small team and make a quick demo at Hot Hacks. Um, just to give you a little bit of context of where I'm coming from, I'm the founder and artistic director of a place called Union Docs, and um, this project is coming out of the Union Docs Collaborative Studio, which brings together um, 12 artists, six of whom come from the U.S. and six are international, uh, to work together for a year on a project um, uh, that's a documentary project. And uh, we kind of come up with a theme and the focus um, and have a unique process for sort of developing this work. Um, so it's, it's myself and, and uh, over the course of this, the Living Los Suras project, 36 different artists will be working on, uh, on what I'm about to show you. Um, but this was sort of a, a first step. Um, so uh, the first experiment, we're taking a film from um, 1984 that, that was shot in the neighborhood that Union Docs is a part of. I'm going to let this experiment kind of play in the background while I explain because um, it's uh, largely audio dependent and streaming. So uh, I think we're not going to get a lot of it through the screen share, but um, you kind of get the idea. Uh, so the, the, the film in the foreground, um, that I'm sort of wiping away here and revealing things in the background um, is a film called Los Suras by Diego Echeverria. Um, it's from 1984. Uh, it was, it's a great m movie shot on 16 millimeter, kind of early uh, cinema verite documentary, um, aired on PBS, but largely unseen by the neighborhood that it was uh, that it actually showed. Um, uh, people at that time weren't really watching PBS, and this was. This is a time in the neighborhood um, of Williamsburg was one of the poorest and uh, most violent places in New York City. So um, I don't know if any, any of you all know Williamsburg today, but it's a different place. But the, the sort of the elements of, uh, of that history are still very much uh, a part of the neighborhood. Um, so we're we're taking this. Uh, we're working with Diego um, as this film comes up to its 30th anniversary in 2014 to do a series of projects that sort of update, annotate, and spiral off from the original. Um, and to do that, uh, and so that that's where each of these uh, each of these different artists in the collaborative will be working. Um, so to to uh, get the most out of uh, our our day, days at Hot Hacks, we um, uh, James Burns and Chris Dicarios, um and I uh, worked together to do three experiments. This is the first experiment, which was just very uh, really basic interface of two videos, um, the original on top and a, and another on on bottom. Um, and, in a, and a way to, for the user to sort of see, compare and slide back and forth and do this sort of uh, layered juxtaposition. Um, one of the things I realized very quickly in, in editing this quickly together that, that uh, weekend was uh, you know, how much of the content that we have connected to the content from the past and also um, you know, how much could be done with uh, you know, really shooting and designing the content for this, for this type of interface. Um, so uh, yeah, so this is just uh, one of the ideas, and what we have is the original film is being que is queuing popcorn, um, uh, so that it'll move into the next experiment in just a second here. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll see if I can get a little so, bit of the. So video. Christopher, just so it's clear to people what they're seeing, like you're just dragging that slider back and forth in real time, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. And so. In the, you know, I think that there's something that, that's really compelling about that for people who are exploring it. Um, I think the content, 
uh, we'll get, we need to work on that part. And then also the, you know, there's moments in where popcorn could actually, you know, it'd be nice to have it cue the slider to certain mo certain sides of the frame where you'd you'd actually be forced to look at something and lose sort of that control, and then you know the control would return to you. Um, and I think there's different ways that we could visualize also where the divide between the you know the the slider is. So this is the second experiment, and on the um, it's mostly an audio experiment, so I'm just going to describe it. Um, but on the we're using the Ratiator, which is a, a plugin. Um, that uh, Chris DeCarios, uh developed over the weekend, and it, it basically um, allows us to hear the audio from this side of the video, from the, the old video. And on the left, we have a, a group of cops from 1984 who all worked in the neighborhood, and they're sort of giving their commentary on this scene and talking about this gang um, and saying some fairly controversial things <laughs> at that point. But as you move back and forth between the video on the left um, and the video on the right, you are mixing their audio, so you start to hear the original video, and you hear also the commentary uh, and sort of uh, uh, thoughts by these these cops from Brooklyn on the left, um, and they're kind of giving us you know their side of the story. What we imagine doing with this part part of the one really fun things for this project has been to show uh, it to lots of people in the neighborhood because they maybe didn't see it, and it cues so many memories, and it's such a great way to connect to people. Um, and uh, they also have their own funny stories that sort of spiral off from from uh, the starting point. So, um, so, so we we imagine kind of a, a constellation of of uh, recordings of people watching the film. So, so any of the viewers uh, can sort of feel like they're watching the movie with the neighborhood at different times. Um, and then the third experiment integrates uh, popcorn with Ziga. Um, uh, Ziga is a HTML5 um, open source platform that's currently in its alpha phase. Um, that's uh, you know designed to make interactive um, documentary experiments or database documentaries online. Um, so what we have, uh, what was built over the weekend was a plugin that allowed um, Popcorn to call up Ziga projects. Ziga, you'll see it in a second here. Um, Ziga is a uh, brings. Is composed of like has projects that are composed of frames, and each of those frames like you can kind of build a layout in, and you can add different media elements from different open APIs into it. And uh, so we're using that to kind of um, uh, move through the, through the experience here and give people interaction. So this is a not the layout that we're ultimately thinking about, but here you have Marta on the right hand of the frame um, today, and then you have her obviously in 1984, and she's giving some commentary there. Um, I know you can't hear it too well. Um, but this is this is. We're in touch with all the uh, characters from the film, um, many of whom are still living in the neighborhood, and so uh, we're doing short pieces that work with those characters and documents, sort of tell their stories of the past 30 years and where they're at. Um, and this is just about to queue. So here now we just, just queued into a Ziga sequence. Um, and you can hear there's an audio track in the background. This is Marta's voice talking about her first marriage and the kind of some of the abuse that she had. And this is a set of the, the, the window that we're in here is the Ziga window. And we're just clicking through a series of movies, a uh, series of films shot by one of the collaborative artists that shows um, Marta's Marta's, you know, uh, family's photographs, um, and these are independent. And at the end of the audio track, it returns us to uh, to the narrative, um, uh, to the original film. So, it's sort of, uh, the idea is that we could create these sort of annotations and and um, uh, smaller stories that would allow you to kind of dip in and out of the uh, the original. So there's some I don't want to get to this last last sort of image here, but it's coming up. Uh, but this this one is actually time based. Um, so Z this is just one of the things that Ziga can do. It, you know, you can lay in images and audio from um, Open APIs, so Flickr, SoundCloud, YouTube, uh, Vimeo, etc. 
Um, or you can have your own sort of URLs. You add them to a database. You're able to sort that database and create different frames that you know pull up on different media, and then you sequence that media. And right now, it's sort of they have uh, not some nonlinear components where you can click create links on the screen and and click away, and then um, and, but the dominant experience is sort of set up in this in this uh, frame by frame section. Um, but then there's you can create certain elements that persist over multiple frames. Like right now, the audio obviously is persisting. And the thing about this that's kind of interesting for us is that um, I could potentially edit the code of the popcorn side or work with a developer. Here now we move back to the original film. Um, but the, uh, the each of the collaborative participants could kind of use Ziga, which is uh, they don't need to know any code, and they can they could you know ch make changes within those small sort of uh, tangents. Um, and uh, and then those 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 would you know be incorporated into the broader project. Um, and the I'm going to send advance a little bit here. Well, then, this Chris, is this another. Is, this is Gunner. Let's uh, let's leave some time for Q and A. Sure. Okay. But didn't mean to interrupt you. Sure thing. No worries. This is just another example of uh, this is another Ziga sequence. Here, with an idea of there being a tangential story about salsa at this moment, when you see salsa in the um, in the original film, and here I could link away. And I just want to show you the maybe one last thing here. Um, I'll see. Hopefully, this will be fine. Yeah. So this is just going back to that uh, that sort of slider frame, and here we have like the it's basically the same place, same scene, same people. Um, uh, but shot 30 years differently, and this is sort of compelling way to reveal the past behind, or uh, the you know the present behind the past. Um, uh, so just another experiment, actually using the same thing from the intro, uh, but now with a with a scene that actually has dialogue. And here the di audio from the um, from the two videos is mixed when you when you use the slider. So I guess I'll, I'll maybe I'll leave it at that, and uh, yeah, see if there's any. Questions. That is great, great stuff. Really, really impressive use of all those technologies. It's great to see those open APIs getting mashed together. Um, yeah. Thanks. So, so Chris, I, I don't know if you've got your Etherpad open, but we're uh, down at line two eleven. Uh, there's a bunch mm -hmm. of questions. Um, as you scroll down there, um, <clears throat> Matt or Brett or somebody, does somebody want to speak to the DIY versus WPM distinction? I think that's useful for people to have those acronyms. Demystified in this context, Gunnar. I think those questions are actually for the next next item, not uh, did questions I, for. Did I overshoot the runway? All right, <laughs> I did. Well, does that mean there are no questions? Interesting. Are there any questions in the chat channel or anywhere else? I see questions being allocated at line one forty two. Just for some context, in case it wasn't clear, this was up made at the um, Hot Hacks Weekend that we did as part of the Hot Docs Festival that was at the Mozilla Toronto office. So um, was, along with this project, there were actually five other filmmaking teams that were paired with developers. Um, and it went really well. This is a great example of you know, Christopher as, um, <laughs> as far as I know, is not a developer himself, but was able to come up with a really great uh, proof of concept around his ideas by working with uh, Chris, uh, who's a developer, a popular developer at Seneca, and as he mentioned, James, who's a developer of Ziga. So this team worked really, really well. So hats off to them. Thanks. Right. So uh, one of the questions that's being raised is that um, the ability to slide seamlessly between past and present feels pretty amazing and web native. Um, has this been done elsewhere before? Is this a first ever of any kind? I, I, I'm not sure I can speak to that. <laughs> but, uh, oh, in that case, you should always just say, hell yeah. You should just <laughs> claim, claim it, baby. <clears throat> yeah, I guess, yeah, yeah, maybe. Um, uh, I think one of the things that we see the opportunity with this setup is that, you know, the, 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 Movies really like this river, and then these sort of interface experiments. They can be very simple, so like you know, people know exactly what they're supposed to do, but but they would just be queued up, um, and we'll just keep moving through them. And I really like the way that with with popcorn and, and Ziga together, these opportunities come up for people to play. But then 
they don't persist and it's really just like you know at that moment in the film that this this thing can happen um so i i'm I, a lot of what we're thinking about for the next steps are along those lines of hopefully finding more things that haven't been done um Got but it. i'm guessing there's probably been some things that <laughs> that use that kind of idea so. right on well for this call you're king yeah. Hey, um, <laughs> another another question raises. You know, where where was the original idea for this um, inspired? Um, yeah, so uh, so we, we we actually have a brick and mortar facility in Brooklyn, um, and we exhibit documentaries and uh, all sorts of nonfiction work. And a couple of filmmakers who have actually done some really amazing work: Pablo um, uh, Apaco Dionis and uh, Pamela Yates. Um, Came, screened at our place, and they're like, "Hey, did you see this film from '84?" And they gave us a VHS copy, which is actually you look you were looking at the uh, the dub of that. Um, uh, eventually, we'll, we're gonna we found the original 16 millimeter, and we're gonna make 4K scans of it, so it's gonna be really really beautiful. Um, but uh, they gave us a film like five years ago, and I've I've always watched it uh, with people that just moved to the neighborhood or suggested people do it, and it just seemed like a great tool uh, to 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 connect. To the place, um, I think part of the bigger idea of the project is that you know we all we are more and more living in diverse you know global cities where people um, you know overlap in space but don't necessarily intersect in life. And this is a way maybe using media that we can create a kind of new public space where sort of encounters can happen and people can become more interested in each other's stories. So it's really this ongoing iterative storytelling project with lots of people getting out there in the place that you know. There and, and using this film as a tool to connect. Very cool. I think we've got uh, time for maybe one more question. Uh, what are plans for distribution for this sort of work? Yeah, and I think this is a, this last question is also a really good one too. Uh, maybe I'll try to address them both in one quickly. Um, Distribution-wise, uh, yeah. So mm -hmm. we are uh, um, going to be launching the the project uh, in a sort of pilot phase um, in about six months. Um, we received a, a grant from the NEA um, uh, that will allow us to do that, and uh, then we'll be working on it for another th three years. We've been already doing a lot of work in the community. Um, we have r this summer uh, coming up a, a big screening in a public park that's going to be like uh, installed two, two screens on either side of a, a handball court. Uh, in Brooklyn and should get a lot of people from the neighborhood out. We did uh, an early kickoff screening in the basement of a church at the First Spanish Presbyterian Church and had a really excellent mixed crowd and a really long uh, emotional conversation. Um, and we're working with uh, a lot of nonprofits uh, in the near area, El Puente, um, St. Nick's, uh, and uh, kids at schools and all that. All those folks and, and uh, the stories that come out of them are, are really part of this bigger activity. So there's going to be both things that you might term sort of user-generated projects where um, you know, uh, a database of information, of, for instance, on like graffiti that is collected from uh, and authored by people in the community will be available at a certain moment of film, um, and then things that will be more authored by, uh, by folks who are you know, attempting to be professional uh, documentarians. Awesome. Well, hey. This is fantastic. I think uh, this is extremely exciting stuff that we'd love to hear more about as it moves forward. Very, very beautiful work. Cool. Thank you. And if I can just put a little uh, plug, we, we have uh, the collaborative is opening up its applications for next year. So if you know anybody who uh, would be a good candidate, um, send them to our website because uh, we're looking for a really exciting group of artists next year who are uh, going to be making this work. Excellent. Thank you. And a big shout out and congratulations to Brett and the whole Hot Hacks team for just creating so much energy and so many cool toys. Uh, at this point, I'd like to start by making a public service announcement, which is that Ryan Gosling has become visible in the shared screen, or at least was for a brief second there. Um, <laughs> if I could turn everyone's attention to line 176 in the Etherpad, it is time to talk about Mozilla Summer Code Party. Jess and your posse, take it away. Yes, I just wanted to brighten everyone's morning with a little Ryan, but I think uh, we all have that anyway. So um, before I get started, I just wanted to give a huge shout out to just an enormous amount of MoFos who have been working to make this beta test possible, which I'm about to talk about, particularly um, you know, Laura and Chloe and Erin on the learning team side, and um, 
Atul, Pomac, Michelle um, on the engineering side, as well as David Asher in engineering, um, the other Michelle, <laughs> as well as um, Michelle Thorne and Matt on the um, communication side. Really, we all were scrambling um, in a great way together to, to make this possible, and it was, it's really exciting that I can um, talk about this with you all. Is my screen not sharing all of a sudden? Yeah, we just lost it. Can you click the button again? Is it working now? Yep. Great. So as you can see on my screen, I am showing you the beta test, the summer campaign beta test wiki. The next round of beta testing is going to be running from May 7th to the 27th. And I'm not going to talk too much about that other than the fact that we do have several beta tests lined up for the next few weeks. Um, with large amounts of use in Toronto um, in conjunction with Ladies Learning Code, in London in conjunction with a bunch of Mozilla um, parties that they're going to be having in the office, um, and New York in conjunction with the Hive, as well as um, um, a nice group of about two dozen beta testers who have just signed up to work on it. But we are looking for more and um, would love it if anyone feels inspired after this call to, to sign on and test out some of the projects and give us some feedback. But the primary focus for this round of beta testing is really getting our feet wet, giving some um, feedback into the projects that we're developing and also give us some insight into hopefully how we can make um, projects in the future or how you can make pro contribute your own projects to, um, to this larger community of people who are making things on the web. So the wiki, this wiki is basically the landing page for anybody who is interested in beta testing. You can find out exactly what you need to do, all of your step-by-step -step, um, instructions. But I'm going to direct you right now to look at the um, Web Page Maker project page, which we set up as a, it's a website right now where we are hosting um, the projects that we are hoping people will beta test. And you can really see just like a nice description of each project here, some tags to let you know kind of what categories and what level of difficulty um, the projects are in terms of skill and, and what exact skills you'll be um, targeted with the project. Um, keep in mind this is a beta and these are not all the projects that we're going to be releasing. Hopefully in the future we'll have the opportunity to have more scaffolded experiences and create projects for learners of different um, ages as well as skill sets and um, different kinds of levels of skill. So I'm just going to take you through very quickly a few projects. Here's one, our favorite serious cat. You too can make your own meme. Um, I'm just going to quickly show you what the experience is like here. So you come in, you see a little bit of the code on the left. Um, of course this is a prototype of the editor. Um, it will not be purple in the future, I promise you. Um, so you can go right in and you can start editing away. Um, and you see on the bottom in the heads up display, you can see kind of that you're getting feedback for automatically. So I didn't finish my H1 tag. So in the very bottom here, you can see that um, the editor is giving, reminding me that I need to finish finish writing that tag, close it. Web makers. And then I'm going to – no, that's not a good thing to me. <laughs> so um, this is one – our first one. It's really a very like an entry-level project for someone where they can really just change some of the elements and the goal is for people to have fun. and. Um, internet meme. Another project that we're doing, this is, these are both web page maker projects, is called Stuck in the 90s. The, go, the goal here is for, for users really to take a look at their, um, the design that goes into making a web page and consider the different kinds of font choices that you might make or, um, or even color and um, placement. And so um, you can see we can change various things here like the background or the padding is um, – but the goal is really just to you know, start to get comfortable tinkering. And you can see that we really added lots of helpful comments here so that you can get comfortable um, 
slowly digesting different chunks of the, the, the HTML on the left side of the page. Um, so you can see um, very quickly that this can get um, – it's very hard for me to leave the page because I totally want to redesign it for the, night, for the, for the 2012. Um, so those two projects that I just showed were web page maker projects, and they're really focused on hackable web pages that you can go get access through our web page maker editor. So the other kind of projects that we're working on, we are internally calling them DIY recipes, um, mainly just so that we can distinguish between ourselves. But really, when you get to them, you're going to see, you're, you'll naturally see the difference. But um, this project is created by members of the Hive, and is basically asking you to go to this website and write the next chapter of Inanimate Alice. The next episode is called of Inanimate Alice, which is a transmedia novel. Um, and uh, a user can really decide if they want to take on the, the changing, editing, editing the character, or changing the location, or even you know really diving in and um, exploring the plot. And actually, Lainey did a great write up of how she user tested this with her um, daughter in one of the um, a great blog posts that was featured a few weeks ago. Um, but it's really step by step, and this is just on the wiki right now as a, um, as a temporary step before we build out the website. And we also did another one um, that is focusing on popcorn and how to hack a commercial. So these are, these are basically the different kinds of things that you can expect to test out, and we really are hoping that you do. Um, you, you do join us for this user test, this round of user testing. The one thing that we also added is that in line 193 of the Etherpad, which I'll just put up if we're still looking at my screen, Chloe did a um, sketch note guide to hosting a summer code party, so that it's a really visual step-by-step -step instructions um, for people who are who are hosting their own um, kitchen kitchen party. Um, so before I hand it off. To, to the rest of the team, are there any questions that I can answer? Hey, Jess, there's some questions in the uh, line, uh, started under line, let's see, uh, 225. All right, so again, the two types are DIY and WPM. Of course, this is just an internal thing. It's going to be really more self-explanatory when you get to the, um, the actual landing page for the project. But basically, web page maker projects are hackable web pages um, that are going to be used with the web page maker tool. And DIY projects are pages that you have to go to um, off of the web page, you know, off of the main site to. And yes, DIY does mean do it yourself. <laughs> Um, it's kind of in the same vein as something like Instructables or Make. It's a step-by-step -step instructions. Um, actually, the best way for us to give feedback is really not the, the is really through the questionnaire, which is actually detailed in the um, kitchen table. Uh, sorry, in the summer campaign beta um, wiki, which I can. I don't know if my screen is still sharing, but I will show you very briefly. It's a nice little questionnaire. Um, I'm gonna. But if you want to give feedback on specifically features to the editor, then um, you could do that on the link that the tool put on line 233. Um, what's in store for the future? <laughs> so right. So these are only a portion of the projects we're working on, and hopefully we'll iterate with with your help. We are building out. I put a bunch of projects such as like how to make an animated GIF, which is going to be um, powered by Tumblr. And also um, another Tumblr project is going to be how to make customized and HTML themes. We're also going to be doing a bunch of projects with Hive, Hive members that are supposed to be more interest-based and really um, meeting, meeting these where they're at. And um, we're also going to be having some, some kind of templates so that people can create their own projects, um, which hopefully we will be doing at events like the ne upcoming Nesta event. And I'm scrolling. Right. So in terms of in terms of use, this 
our, as uh, Ben, I believe, wrote here, our public targeting has to be for 13 and up for legal reasons. But we are, you know, youth are our core audience. But just like with many of our other projects, we, real, we recognize that we have users of many different rate, skill sets in them, as well as age ranges. I think I answered everything. If there's any more questions, feel free to join the um, learning team call on Thursday. Um, and also, please, once again, join the, um, feel free to join the beta testing party. So now I'm going to pass it over to, I believe, Erin and um, Michelle. OK. Can everybody hear me? Hello. Yes. Great. So um, I'll quickly just run through, just highlight a few new partners that we have, um, and then I'll hand it back over to um, Ben and Jess, I guess, for the peer assist. But um, we're talking to a bunch of people still, but there's some awesome new partners that have, um, you know, at least initially signed on to <clears throat> to participate. Um, things like the London Zoo, um, Digital Me, which is a um, organization in the UK, Teach for America, Creative Commons. Open Study PDPU, and I think I've listed here um, the ways that um, that we these organizations are thinking about participating now. And, and I think one thing to highlight is that there are lots of different ways to participate. And so um, there's a few like the London Zoo and Digital Me, which will most likely um, be building projects like just just showed. So they'll they'll have actual projects that'll work on top of Web Page Maker or um, point out to other websites. Um, that will be focused on themes that are kind of important to them, like the London Zoo will most likely do a project around um, you know, species and biology and extinction. Um, and Digital Me, which is doing this program around um, called Supporter to Reporters, will most likely do something around the Olympics and helping youth um, you know, think about kind of journalism around, around that. Um, but then there's other partners that are just like, essentially um, promoting this to their community, um, and that's also super valuable. Um, so if you know, certainly know um, p uh, potential partners like that, that would it would be great to have more people doing that. And then there's partners that are actually going to run events um, on the weekend of code or across the summer, like P2PU is going to do some, um, SoundCloud, uh, Creative Commons. So, so there's lots of different ways that people can, can partner, and that was one of the core things I wanted to point out today um, on top of just like the awesome names of the people that are coming in. So um, there will be more kind of, you know, more places to point people over the next couple of weeks as we launch some things. But, um, but uh, uh, definitely keep getting the word out. And there's, again, there's lots of different ways to participate. So with that, I will hand it back over to, um, I guess one thing to note before handing it back over is that we are launching, um, we're doing a press release and the event site launch um, next week, so around May 15th most likely. And so that's kind of when we're really like, climbing on the mountaintop and making a lot of noise, doing a lot of screaming about it. Um, and that will also be when we have a place to point people to then sign up to um, run events or participate. So, um, so we'll talk more about that on Tuesday next week and start to give people links. But, um, but get ready for, for a, lot of, a lot of noise around that. So um, with that, Jess, do you want to do a peer assist around the data testing? Or is that Michelle Thorne? I think it's Michelle. Cool. And process-wise, I think we only have a couple more minutes. So uh, how do we all want to use those? That was not my item. Um, I thought it was Ben or Michelle. Nope. Okay. Was, uh, mine is Tumblr. Why don't we dive into the Tumblr one quickly, Ben? Sure. Um, uh, yeah. And, and so, so this is, uh, I don't think we need to like, spend much time talking about it, but mainly if folks can, can chime in with thoughts. Um, basically, Tumblr is probably our single biggest headline partner. And um, they, like, I had a call yesterday or last week with their folks who, do, who are going to be helping to promote it. Um, and basically what they said is, like, tell us what you'd like. And, you know, we might not be able to do all of it, but tell us what you want us to do. And so, um, my hope is that this call will have people who are very intimately aware of like Tumblr and also of, of the ways that Tumblr can touch people who are who are who use Tumblr. Um, like what what is what institutional voice does it have and that type of thing. Um, and so there are a few ideas already um, that we've written that I've written down um, between lines two eighteen and two twenty five. Um, and then someone added the, the storyboard item, um, which seems great. Um, and then if there's other thoughts you have, 
uh, would love to to see them, um, and then we'll be going back to them later this week with uh, thoughts. And that's it. Thank you, Ben. Right on. Any feedback on the Tumblr item or that link to the beta page? Any other questions? Just looking down here, did any new questions appear in the questions section? Cool. I think we're good. Any last words from any of the team, Aaron, Jess, or Posse? Nope. I think we're good. Awesome. Well, that was a super intense and very excellent update. Thank you so much. Um, I am drawing people's attention to the red panda item in line 231. Okay. Let us move forward. I think we have some more uh, visual excitement. The land of opportunity. Turning people's attention to line 260. Uh, Louisa, are you there? Have you hit star 7 to become unsilent? I did. Can you hear me? We can hear you just fine. You want to tell us about Land of Opportunity, please? Yes. Um, I don't know how much visual excitement we're going to have because I'm having um, trouble accessing the shared screen, but um, the links are below that I'd be uh, pointing people to. Um, Land of Opportunity is um, a doc project that I've been working on for about six years in New Orleans, um, and we've been um, chronicling the rebuilding process in New Orleans as a starting point for a conversation about what's been happening in urban America. And uh, we have a feature film that was released last year. Um, it's always been a transmedia project and we've had sort of a feature film as sort of the cornerstone of the project and we've been working on um, evolving sort of interactive video content that um, delves deeper into the issues that we've been investigating with the project. And we have a prototype of what we're calling our, our interactive web video player, for lack of a better, better snazzy title right now, um, where we're taking video from the project and um, using popcorn, actually sort of uh, merging popcorn and Drupal, we're um, layering additional content um, onto, the, onto the video that increases engagement and um, awareness of the urban issues that we've been looking at in the film. So the first um, piece of content that we're dealing with looks at public and affordable housing um, in New Orleans and other cities across America. And we're starting to partner with folks, um, educators, advocates, and data entities in sister cities who will curate content to layer onto our video content um, with the hopes that we're creating a space where folks can get involved in, in discussing, learning more, and taking action on urban issues that are affecting their own communities. So we have this prototype that um, we've developed that's really bare bones on the design front, but it's our first attempt at um, working with popcorn and integrating popcorn and Drupal. Um, we have a CMS where we've been um, starting to work with partners in uploading and curating content um, that they feel will support their particular campaigns, or in the case of educators, um, will be able to point students towards the kinds of issues that they want to investigate. And so we're hoping to get some feedback on this demo um, from folks far and wide, both um, who have a certain expertise on the core urban issues that we're looking at and folks who are also interested in working with popcorn, um, Drupal, and integrating both, and also sort of looking at design because we, we have a lot of questions about user experience and interface and how we can sort of maximize the potential of, of what we're doing. So we've put together this demo and we have a survey. Um, and for folks who don't have time to answer questions on the survey, um, you know, emailing us or um, getting, make, commenting via our, our Living Docs page would be really incredibly helpful. And so that's kind of where we're at. Um, let me just see if I can figure out, am I, I'm still not, yeah, I'm, not, I'm still not able to access the shared screen unfortunately. Um, but the links are below. And it was coming through fine for a second for what that's worth. I'm sorry? Uh, the shared screen was coming through fine for a while there. Oh, what, yeah, I'm still getting, I'm getting. Yeah, we're, I'm we're see, uh, I see, so Matt's doing it. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh okay. 
I'm got, I've got nothing right now. Hold on, let me try and refresh this. This is Brett. This, I just wanted to throw a shout out to, to Lisa because it's really great to see the Drupal integration. Um, it's kind of a neat um, way that um, a project uh, manager like Louisa, but also the educational partner she's working with, can add content um, on top of Popcorn. So it just provides a nice um, back end to do that. So there's multiple ways that people um, can add Popcorn experiences without needing to write code. Um, and of course, this is all um, being done open source, so it's, it's awesome. And if folks can just take a little bit of time for that survey, it's going to be hugely useful um, for our team. Yeah, thank you so much, guys. And yeah, absolutely, that's the whole idea is for the ease for partners to be able to curate and contribute content in a really dynamic, sort of evolving way is really the main goal of the project. Excellent. Any questions or other comments about what we're looking at? And Lisa, do you want to give us any more specifics on the kind of feedback that the folks on this call could be offering you? Is there any uh, sort of higher level or more specific things for folks to focus on? Um, very much on the design front and on the user experience front. Um, there's a lot of clunky stuff that we're just starting to sort of um, do broad strokes of, and, it, and it's just sort of a skeleton. Like there's been very little work on the design front and the user experience front. And so it would be great to sort of hear brutal honesty from folks around what's feeling counterintuitive, what's not working, what feels distracting or crowded, or even, you know, where this could go um, in terms of visioning for it further down the line as we push into phase one, because we're going to move into phase one of building this in the next few months. Awesome. Well, this is thank really, so really striking. Yeah, thank you for sharing this on the call, and we'll look forward to seeing where this goes. Please keep us posted. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Let me turn everyone's attention to line 284 in the Etherpad. Michelle Levesque, rumor has it you've been hanging with teachers and doing hack jams. <laughs> that is true. So we had the Toronto Teacher Hack Jam on Saturday. Uh, there were over 40 classroom teachers who came literally from kindergarten through the college level. Uh, and almost all of them were non-technical teachers in that what they taught were, you know, history, geography, things like that. They weren't computer teachers. Uh, so it went really awesomely. We had a whole bunch of different sessions. We organized, I believe, eight different sessions that they could attend at any one time, and then they could kind of rotate through them and pick which three they wanted to attend. Um, there was an incredible amount of enthusiasm for folks. In fact, the number one bit of feedback we got was they said, you know, oh, I happened to hear about this from so-and-so. I'm so glad I did. I, uh, it would have sucked if I'd missed it. How do I find out about these things in the future? So we got a lot of that kind of, you know, oh my god, I really want to know about this feedback. Um, another piece of feedback that we got, and this is a little bit Toronto specific, but hopefully we can take it and run with it for future things, was they were saying that um, Toronto teachers have specific PA days. Those are the, the non uh, teaching days, days off, that are meant for learning things. So there are days that they're supposed to go out and learn things, and they were saying you should tap into that um, so that on those actual days, this is listed as one of those things that you could come learn. They were also saying that you know a million of their colleagues, if they'd known about this, would have uh, absolutely loved it. One of the things to think about going forward is how to follow up with these folks. So you know they were definitely wildly inspired, but are they actually incorporating it into their classroom? Um, so I'm going to be reaching out to them in a couple of months to, to see that, but that's clearly not going to be scalable as we go forward. Um, and I'm also going to be putting together a how to run things like this kit so that it can be done in different cities, not necessarily in Toronto and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, it was great. We had lots of good photos and stuff. Any questions? Let me invite the avid typers in the house to go on mute while they type. Sorry to interrupt that question that was just about to happen. 
sorry, this is Erin. Yeah, one question was just, um, did you get a sense of how we might be able to do this in, or if we might be able to do this in the future, like without Mozilla involved? Is that part of the kit idea? Yeah, I think that uh, in the future it would absolutely be possible to get this. I think that the biggest two challenges are, one, finding good people to run the sessions, and you kind of have to know the lay of the land in that geography a little bit to find folks who are uh, technical but also are able to speak to teachers, which is a very specific skill set. Uh, and the second one is, is knowing who to, how to advertise, how to get these people involved. And I think that neither of those have to be done by Mozilla. But this is definitely something that folks outside of Mozilla could, could run with. Cool. Very cool. Let's see. I'm looking at the other questions. Um, Michelle, is your attention tied to line 300 through 309? Anything you want to riff on in that range? You mean something upstairs? Uh, line 309, how to talk to teachers? No, any, anything from 300 to 309, we're just in the what did we learn? I'm just watching this stuff get captured, and if it's already been yeah. said, it's been said. Yeah, I, I think that what has been said has been said. Cool. Any other questions for Michelle? Excellent. Well, thank you. Congratulations. Can't wait to rock out in Boston with you this coming weekend. And uh, let us move on down the line. So um, <clears throat> Matt, is this an agenda item, the popcorn maker update? Does it have an owner? Brett, is there a popcorn maker update you might like to make, or Bobby, or anybody? Hello? Yes? OK. Um, yeah, I just wanted to show uh, the, the new version of the pop-up template that we actually tried on the weekend um, at the Hack Jam session. Kate, can you get a lot closer to your microphone? Yes. Sorry. Can you hear me okay now? Yes? Oh, that's much better. And it was really fun to hear the phone set go across the table. <laughs> <laughs> okay, excellent. Um, yeah, I just wanted to uh, tell everybody that there's a new version of the pop-up template that seemed to be pretty popular at the, um, the session on the weekend. So I encourage everybody to try it. There's some uh, minor fixes to the design and the usability of, of the actual editor. So definitely try it out. And please uh, let us know about your suggestions or your feedback. Um, I would love to hear all about anything you want to say about our template. So yeah, that's all. What's new about it? Oh, um, I guess. Uh, Basically, what's new is, is the editor is a little bit different. Um, it's you know there's some cues about what you know how to fill in the right link. Uh, you can actually drag around um, the pop-up location if you try editing a pop. Do you want to double-click on the the pop? Yes, and then go to position. It's on the the left-hand side. There you go. Um, and now you can actually drag around the position. Okay. So um, as opposed to having to fill in um, a numbers. So uh, yeah, it's a little bit easier to use. And if you have any more suggestions, um, please let me know or us know. Awesome. I also just Thank wanted to so add, much. too, that lo lots of other tiny little things have been fixed. Um, in uh, Popcorn 0 .4 or Popcorn Maker 0 0.4. So if you actually use this, you'll, you'll notice that the app feels quite a bit faster and it's more responsive. Um, that's props to the rest of that team uh, that just got that out uh, last week. So it's working much, much, much better. And you can see also the redesigns to the tray. If nobody has seen that recently, uh, the export and sharing has been uh, got a lot of love. Um, so it's coming along really, really well. Very exciting. Thanks. All right. Uh, let me draw people's attention to the nonverbal update going down in real time, line 324 to 331. Thanks to Henrik for getting that on radar and Michelle for getting it typed in. Um, and I am going to jump ahead to line 336 as long as it's 336. Matt, do you want to be talking about Mozilla All Hand meetings coming up? Uh, no, just that um, and this, this coming Monday, uh, May 14th, uh, we'll be giving um, a kind of a sneak peek at the summer campaign. 
and new Mozilla WebMaker brand. Um, so watch out for that. Excellent. So I am not seeing any other agenda items. Uh, would anybody like to add anything to the agenda? Would uh, Michelle or Henrik like to give a verbal update on the Republic of Popcorn session? Any ahas that came away from that? Ah, Henrik, so sorry you can't talk. Do you want to just type stuff into IM and I'll read it dramatically? Kidding. All right. Um, any other agenda items he said looking longingly in the neighborhood of line 351? Let me draw your attention on line 355 to the uh, Mozilla calendar at etherpad.mozilla.org slash calendar. And if you've got ideas for guest speakers, please add those to the guest speakers etherpad. Uh, any other orders of business open, Matt, before we close? I think that's a wrap. Beautiful people. Thank you once again for being on the Mozilla WebMaker Community Call. We will look forward to seeing you next Tuesday, same time, same channel. Have a fantastic week, everybody. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Better. Thank you. Please stand by.